Hello everyone, welcome back to Country View Acres. So this year on our property, um, me and Rebecca wanted to get more livestock. We wanted to get a little bit bigger livestock than what we've had in the past because previously we really only had, you know, chickens, ducks, and rabbits. Um, so, you know, Rebecca ended up getting goats. She's got Nigerian dwarf goats and a fainting goat, and that's her thing. She wants to raise those and sell the babies. Uh, but for me, uh, when moving out here to the country, um, besides the freedom and just having some seclusion out here, um, I wanted to be able to raise my own food, grow my own food, be able to fish, be able to hunt. I just wanted to be more self-sufficient out here. Um, so I wanted to be able to raise an animal that, that would provide us some meat. So we decided that we would end up raising pigs so that we could have pork. Um, so we ended up getting a couple feeder pigs this year. Uh, they were about 20 pounds when we got them. We raised them up, but so they were around 270, 300 pounds um, when we when they were finally done. Um, they were really uh, ended up being uh, an enjoyable animal to raise. We enjoyed the pigs. We enjoyed going out feeding the pigs and interacting with them. They were super easy to fence in. Uh, they just ended up being um, I, definitely an animal that we'll raise again in the future. So. About three or four weeks ago, we took them to the butcher and had them processed at a butcher. I think it definitely the first time around, it's just a better to just take them somewhere and have it done. Um, and then maybe we can figure out, maybe in the future sometime, maybe we'll butcher our own. But right now, I think just taking them to the, the butcher, that way everything is, is good, right? You don't have to worry, you, all your bacon's going to be good, your ham's going to be good, your sausage just should be good. Uh, so I think that that's... Uh, uh, our best choice right now is to take them to the butcher to have them processed. So a week and a half after we took the pigs to the processor, we were able to get our normal cuts of meat back. And then we had to wait an additional two to three weeks to get any cured meats back, like your bacon and your ham. So we finally just got that back this week. And uh, so we, we have a freezer just completely full of pork right now. Um, we did sell a half a pig. So we ended up with one and a half pigs for ourselves. And that completely, after I rearranged the freezers the other day, that completely filled one chest freezer with pork. In fact, I had a heck of a time just getting the lid shut uh, on that freezer last night. It is plumb full. And if we would have had both pigs for ourselves, I definitely would have needed a bigger freezer or another freezer. It's just, there's just a ton of meat that we got off these pigs. So we essentially ended up with three uh, halves of a pig and we could have each one of those halves kind of cut up differently. So we ended up with like every type of cut that the butcher offered. So we're gonna be able to, when we look at all the meat today, I'll be able to kind of break down uh, the different cuts of meat and what the choices were. Uh, we'll go over the butchering cost. We'll go over what, kind of what the costs were inside of that butchering cost. And then uh, we'll also just call uh, what the overall cost per pound of meat was for us. So let's go ahead and uh, head down to the freezer. I'll show you all the pork. So we're down in the basement now, and both of these freezers right now are actually very full. And this freezer right here, we've cleaned it out. It's only pork. And it's only pork from the pigs we processed. Um, you can see it is just completely full of pork. So you can see the this is a ham steak here on top. We've got two buckets in here that's got uh, sausage and ground pork. But everything else is just kind of loose in here and in bags. And that's a lot of pork. It wouldn't all fit in there, to be honest with you. So there is some had to, of the overflow had to go into this freezer. So when we open this freezer up, we've got three boxes of pork burgers right there. And then on top, this is 17 pounds of pig fat that we can render down into like lard. Or we can grind it up and add it into like uh, deer sausage and stuff like that. So got quite a bit of meat and everything off those pigs all right we're going to go ahead and start taking all this pork upstairs and laying it out so i can show you everything we got So this is all the pork that we ended up getting off of one and a half pigs. Um, it wouldn't all fit on the table. So we have a bucket here with ground pork in it. There's 17 pounds of ground pork right here. And 
I got another bucket that's got pork sausage in it. There's 23 and a half pounds of pork sausage here. So that's quite a bit of food that we ended up getting off of one and a half pigs. So not sure how long it'll take us to be able to get through all this. So let me go ahead, we'll, we'll get in close and I'll show you all the different types of meat that we end up having here. So on the left side of the table here is, we're gonna start with our cured meats. So this is our ham, and these are all ham steaks right here. You can see these nice big old ham steaks. They're individually packaged. I think they're cut around 3 eighths of an inch thick. We ended up with 31 and a half pounds of ham steaks. So that's a good amount of ham. But then they ended up having what they call ham roasts. And I think it's kind of the end of the ham, or the side of the ham. And they're kind of a, they're not like a, I don't know what you want to call them. They're kind of like a smaller ham that you'd buy in a store, maybe. You can see how thick that is. But we ended up, I think, with around 20 pounds of these ham roasts. So we ended up with a little over 50 pounds worth of ham. We ended up with 17 pounds of pork burgers. That's what that is back there. And then here, these are the ham hocks. And we chose to have them smoked and cured. So they're kind of cured like a ham. And they're going to have that smoke flavor. So we've got some ham hocks through here. And then we get into the bacon. So we ended up with 30 pounds worth of bacon. So these packages range from anywhere from 1 to 2 pounds in size. And then some of it's pork belly bacon. And then some of it is actually called jowl bacon. You can take the jowls and have it cured and sliced just like bacon. And it, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like bacon. It uh, just is a shorter slice. And uh, so pretty much, pretty much this half of the table is all cured meats right there, except the pork burgers. So if you didn't want to uh, get ham and stuff made, I think this would all just basically be like a big pork roast is what you'd end up having there instead if it wasn't cured. And then the pork belly, you could get the pork belly uncured. It's called fresh side. And we have some over here. That's what this is. This is this is fresh side. Now they can slide it, slice it just like bacon, but I've asked them to keep it as one piece so that I can cure my own bacon. So I'm going to try to take this piece. This is just pork belly is all this is. I'm going to try to make my own bacon out of this. So we should be getting more bacon when we're done. So let's go ahead and move on to the fresh cuts of meat. So the first thing would be the loin of the pig, and that's what you have cut into pork chops. So this is a bone-in pork chop. There's four of them in here, and they are one inch thick. That's how thick I had these cut. So these are just a super thick pork chop. And then the other thing you can have it cut into is a butterflied pork chop. So this is a butterflied pork chop. This is a boneless pork chop right here. Or you can basically have these boneless pork chops turned into tenderloins. So these are ran through a, a tenderizer and um, you can basically bread these and make your own pork tenderloins. So there's four in this package as well. I think there's four in every one of these packages. So next up is going to be the pork shoulder. So this is what they call a pork butt or a Boston butt. It is the shoulder of the pig and this is just one big hunk of meat. You can have it uh, cut into this and then this is what we make uh, pulled pork out of you can also have this sliced up and It'll be what they call a pork steak. So these are pork steaks um, and uh, That's if you have the shoulder sliced You can also have it made into shoulder roasts and it's basically kind of bigger chunks of The cross you know of that pork butt so it's like a bigger chunk of this pork butt cut into smaller roasts so that you're not cooking so much at a time. But that's basically the choices we had for the shoulder portion of the pig. And then as far as the ribs go, um, each side of the pig, you're gonna get a spare rib on the side of the pig, and then you're gonna get a baby back. You know, you're gonna get a baby back rib on each side of the pig. So there's gonna be limited ribs, of course. You know, you're only gonna get uh, one pig's going to give you four ribs, right? Two baby backs, two spare ribs. So that's one thing you don't get like a ton of on a pig if you really like ribs. But other than that, I mean, a lot of this is just pork steaks and pork chops and shoulder roasts. And then basically, um, you also get a liver 
and a heart. So let's go ahead and get into the cost of all this and we'll start with the, the processing fee. So to get these one and a half pigs processed, it cost me $410.57. So there is a slaughter fee to kill the animal and then there's a, a processing fee by the hanging weight of animal. So just to have it killed and, and the initial processing was $280. Now anything extra on top of that is, would be the cure and to have pork burgers made. So the pork burgers cost 80 cents a pound extra to have these made. I can easily make these myself I think so this is something I'll probably make in the future. But this cost me an extra $15 um, to have the pork burgers made. And then all of this meat to be cured was an extra dollar a pound to cure our own meat. So you can see why um, I'm going to try to make my own bacon with that fresh side because that can save me quite a bit of money. So there ended up being 114 pounds of this cured meat. So that was an extra $114. That's basically where we got to our $410 for the processing fee. So the, the pork sausage and the ground pork, there's no extra fee for that. That's all included in the regular processing. It's just the, uh, the cure and the pork patties, which was an extra fee. So what did this end up costing me per pound for all this food right here? Well, for the one and a half pigs that I raised and butchered for me, uh, that cost me $449.74 to buy the pig and to feed the pig. Um, plus the butcher fee on top of that came out to $860.31 for all this food. So this is a total of 251 and a half pounds of food, not including that big bag of fat that's down in the you know in the freezer uh, and that came out to three dollars and 42 cents a pound for all this food so i'm sure that uh, overall i don't know if i really came out better than just going to the grocery store and buying it definitely like the ham and the bacon is probably cheaper than what you would buy it in the store but of course the pork chops and stuff are going to be a little more expensive than what you would buy in the store uh, so overall, I don't know if this is the cheapest way to go, but that's not the reason we're doing this, right? We're doing this so that we have a good quality product. Uh, we raised an animal, we know we had a good life, and we just have some good, uh, wholesome food uh, to eat for, for more than a year. There's plenty of food here for us to eat for a long time. So we did enjoy raising the pigs this year, and then here we come to the end of it all, and we've got this huge amount of meat. Uh, here for us to eat and I've never had this much meat before in a freezer. This is just amazing So I actually haven't tried any of it yet. I've been waiting to make this video So I can't really I can't wait to like start trying some of these cuts of meat and start cooking them up So anyway guys, I need to get this in the freezer before it starts thawing out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video